Here on the border between Georgia and Armenia, as you look around with Azerbaijan in the distance, you're not far from a point where the three countries meet. People have lived here for centuries, experiencing both times of peace and conflict. But the plants and animals of these lands know nothing of political boundaries. The Caucasus lies at the crossroads of Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. Remarkably, in a region only the size of France, you'll find peaks higher than any of the Alps. Lands below sea level, lower than any point in all of Europe. Nine of the world's 11 climate types. From subtropical areas where annual rainfall exceeds 240 centimeters, more than 90 inches, to deserts with stunning surprises. And this land is rich with life. The spiritual value of biodiversity and the moral imperative to save it has long been understood. Today what's new is that scientists and increasingly economists understand that biodiversity, abundant life, is a natural source of wealth. It's the basis for the clean air we breathe, the fertile soil, our clean and filtered water. And acre for acre, there's more biodiversity in the Caucasus than in any temperate climate in the world. CNF was created to protect and develop this natural wealth. Launched in 2008 with seed capital of $10 million donated by the German government and nature conservation groups including WWF and Conservation International, CNF's mission is to safeguard the region's national parks and sanctuaries. More than 1.7 million hectares, or 4.2 million acres, and to build up a conservation trust fund that will secure these protected areas for generations to come. Generally in the Caucasus, I will say that people, they have positive attitude to nature, and this is very important. But the problem is that countries after the Soviet collapse of the Soviet Union, all three countries in the South Caucasus, they are in the, in the, still in the transition period, you know. And unfortunately, still a big part of our uh, population in all countries, they still... Uh, have some uh, economic problems. And CNF has already started to work. In Armenia, Khosrow Forest State Reserve is one of a number of parks where CNF is working. Standing atop one of the highest points in Khosrow, WWF Armenia head Karen Manvelian says CNF has helped with essential operating costs, like fuel for patrol vehicles and support for tourism. The government in the Caucasus, and including Armenia, provides not enough money for, for protected areas, and, and it's good that CNF started investment in, and started with this reserve because, I, as I mentioned, it's a flagship reserve. CNF support helps purchase tools of the trade, from binoculars to saddles, cell phones to camera traps. It also supplements pay for park rangers so that they earn a living wage. In Georgia, CNF bought this fire truck, which saved an ancient forest in its first year in service. It also financed a major renovation of the dilapidated visitor center at one of the region's largest protected areas, Borjomi Kharagawli National Park. A decade ago, there were very few visitors to this park, most of them backpackers from Europe and Israel. Today, tourism has increased to more than 10 times the level of 2003, and thanks to improvements made possible by the Caucasus Nature Fund, the park is ready for them.
And now uh, more and more Georgian tourists are coming, visitors are coming to the national park to enjoy uh, this national uh, heritage. Georgia's Minister of Economy and Sustainable Development says vibrant national parks will help local economies. We are now uh, are trying to get away from our busy you know, lifestyles and schedules and we're looking to find uh, vacations in places that are green, uh, sustainable and closer to the nature. So support from CNF is helping people build a future based on ecotourism, a future in which it is more valuable to conserve forests than to clear cut them to protect endangered animals than to poach them. In short, to conserve rather than destroy nature. Most of the Northern Hemisphere can only distantly remember animals of the kind that still roam the Caucasus, including some species which can only be found here. There are brown bears, wolves, red deer, two kinds of mountain goat, an ancestral horned sheep, and several wild cats, most notably the Caucasus leopard whose population has dwindled to less than 1,500 in the world. Encroachment and overhunting, grazing and logging, both during the years of abuse and neglect under the Soviet system and the chaos in the early 1990s that followed the Soviet Union's collapse, have left some scars. The red deer disappeared from uh, Armenia. The bezoar goat has all but disappeared from Georgia two unique species to the, to the Caucasus. These are subspecies that only exist uh, in this part of the world. But Karen Manvelian and David Morrison have plans to repair that damage by reintroducing those animals from one part of the Caucasus to another, across borders. Here in Dilijan National Park, red deer are being brought back from Georgia or Iran. <laughs> Despite the problems, about a quarter of the Caucasus region remains environmentally sound, and the remaining ecosystems, if properly conserved, can sustain the region's unique biodiversity. And that is the ultimate goal of the Caucasus Nature Fund, to find new supporters and partners who enable it to promote cooperation among people, to conserve nature, and to provide economic opportunity for neighboring rural communities for generations to come. Nature is oblivious to man's borders, so its conservation requires a regional solution. The environment is a rare example in this fragmented region of cross-border cooperation. Could it lead to others? Armenia is important, Georgia is important, Azerbaijan, the Caucasus are one of the richest uh, places for biodiversity in the world. If we want to save it, save this world that I knew when I was a child, that I hope my children will inherit and my grandchildren. We're all in it together. Uh, but humans, through our intervention in the planet's natural cycles, are not being fair to our cohabitants of the world. We need to take a little more care, make sure that there's place for them, that animals, plants, insects, all of the co-voyagers on our planet uh, have space to thrive. If they don't, we won't thrive. It's not just about them, it's about all of us.